When you arrive at the airport as you're heading out on a trip, one of the first things you notice is the tall building at the center of the airport. This is the Air Traffic Control Tower and it's staffed with air traffic controllers who are needed for a safe and orderly movement of traffic, both in the air and on the ground. Now, not all airports have towers, but most of the busier commercial airports are staffed by a dedicated group of air traffic controllers. Today, I'm going to give you a quick peek at what the inside of an air traffic control tower looks like, and also an overview of what goes on inside one of these towers. Air traffic control towers are designed to have a 360-degree unobstructed view of an airport, so the controllers can see all of the aircraft in the air and all aircraft and vehicles on the ground. This room with a view is referred to as the tower cab. The tower cab is staffed with the men and women specifically trained to meet the unique needs of that airport. The number of controllers needed for each tower is based on the volume of aircraft arrivals and departures and also the design and complexity of that airport. The tower control duties are divided into four specific operational positions. We have flight data, clearance delivery, ground control, and local control. These positions may be split out or combined at different points in a day based on aircraft traffic, complexity, and weather. The first position we'll talk about is the flight data position. Now, flight data is usually located between the ground control and local control positions and has the primary purpose of processing and forwarding aircraft flight plan information, coordinating weather information, and editing the Automatic Terminal Information Service. Now that's known to pilots as ATIS. The ATIS is a continuous broadcast of recorded airport information which provides a pilot with important information like current weather, active runways, taxiway and runway closures, approach restrictions, any other changes to the airport a pilot may need to be aware of. International Airport Information Offer 23530 the next position we'll talk about is clearance delivery. Now, clearance delivery is established to provide a pilot automated or verbal delivery of air traffic control route of flight instructions, known as ATC clearances, to all the departing aircraft. Each position in the tower cab is equipped with a radio for verbal coordination of clearances, and at the busier airports, we have a digital data link system for transmission of short text messages between aircraft and controllers. Route of flight information is transmitted via this data link system, greatly reducing the congestion on the clearance delivery frequency. The ground control position is located in the tower cab at the position providing the ground controller the best unobstructed view of the entire airport surface area. They're responsible for guiding aircraft and vehicles to and from the runway to parking locations on the airport while ensuring safe separation between these vehicles. They maintain communication with all of the aircraft and vehicles using two-way radio communications. Now, some facilities are equipped with a ground radar to assist in situations where weather lowers visibility, restricting a controller from seeing aircraft due to fog or other weather conditions. Now, the ground controller will ensure that all the outgoing aircraft have all the pertinent weather and runway information that they need. Now, in front of the controller at most facilities, you'll see a rack with rectangular plastic strips with lines of text within that. Now, these are flight progress strips and are used extensively by the controllers. They contain airport departure and route of flight information needed by the pilot and the controller. Now, these strips also serve as a non-verbal means of communication between controllers. The last position we'll talk about is the local control position. The local controller is responsible for separating all inbound aircraft, departing aircraft, and aircraft flying through the controller's airspace, usually about a five-mile radius of the airport. At the same time, they will be clearing arriving aircraft to land, issuing takeoff clearances to departing aircraft. Local controllers ensure that all the aircraft have the needed information such as winds, weather, runway information. And depending on the airport, you may see a radar display which shows local controllers the position of airborne aircraft in or near the tower's airspace. This assists the controller in identifying aircraft using a radar view prior to establishing the important first visual contact with the aircraft. Just like ground, the local controller used flight progress strips to help identify aircraft ready for departure. 
And in the case of arriving or departing aircraft that loses radio communication, the local controller has a light gun that sends a bright beam of light, allowing us to communicate air traffic instructions to the pilot with no two-way radios. So, how does this all fit together? Well, here's a typical departure. First, the pilot will receive its clearance from the clearance delivery position verbally via radio or via automated text through the data link system. Once they are ready to go, the pilot will contact the ground controller and request taxi to the appropriate runway. The ground controller will ensure the pilot has the current weather information. He will issue a ground route and then he will clear the aircraft to taxi to the desired runway. Once the aircraft reaches the runway and is ready for takeoff, the pilot will contact the local controller and will be issued a takeoff clearance. Following departure, the aircraft will be advised to contact the next controller or approved to switch to another frequency. The pilot is constantly in contact with the controller from the time he contacts ground control to the point when he leaves the tower airspace. And basically, that's a Reader's Digest version with a lot of the detail omitted. The air traffic control tower is only one part of the nationwide air traffic control system. Over many years, the FAA has taken on an ever-changing and extremely tough challenge. They have hired some extremely talented people who make a very complex task look easy. I hope this has given you a better understanding of what goes on within the air traffic control tower. Thank you so much for watching.